Frank. I told you I had a burglar. What are you doing up at this time? I've been up since seven o'clock, and if I were at home, I'd be out my bike by now for a train and spin. You see, it's much better at this time of the morning because there's no traffic about. <laughs> Take after me, don't you? Can't sit still for a minute, eh? What, what are you looking for? Oh, I was wondering if you've got any honey anywhere. Honey? No, no. No, that's too sweet for me. There's some marmalade in the kitchen cupboard, and that and some jam, too. Oh, I've found that. I've already got it on the tray. Tray? What tray? For Dad. I'm taking his breakfast up to him. Only you see Grand swears by honey, according to how it's got umpteen million vitamins. So I thought it might do him some good. Look, the fact that you're taking him his breakfast upstairs, it'll do him more good than a cartload of vitamins. We all like being made a fuss of, you know. Except you. Ah, oh, well, I'm an old soldier. I mean, I'm used to looking after myself. If I tell you, a right cracker, a right dolly, you put her in Miss Wales, she'd romp home. No danger. She's way out in front. Go oh, on, you're having his on. You're just dreaming. I'll tell you what, I'll go and pinch you, make sure I'm awake. It's yourself you pinch. I know, but it's not half as much fun. <laughs> go on. Mrs Walker spends half the time trying to get Bet to cover up her cleavage. She's never going to employ another one like that, now is she, Betty? Look, I haven't the remotest idea who Mrs Walker would or would not employ. The workings of her mind are quite beyond me. Look, Peter, you don't have to stay here just for me, you know. Why? Don't you want to finish this? Oh, I'm happy. I thought you might be getting fed up. I tell you if I was. Gran says if there's one thing I do, it's see what I think. Do you want a cup of coffee? No, thanks. No, you've done enough cooking for today. <laughs> well, you can't do it for yourself, can you? Yeah, I know. I know, and I appreciate it. Breakfast in bed was smashing. But don't lay it on too thick, eh? I might get to like it. <laughs> I think Uncle Albert already has. Yeah, very likely. Still, I, uh, I wouldn't mind having a butler. Do you fancy giving it a try? Hmm? Moving in. What, here? With you and Uncle Albert? Well, for starters, yeah. Then if you and Susan got to like the idea, I'd get a little house somewhere, or well, somewhere nearby, not too far away. Susan as well, you mean, yeah? Well, of course you're a twit. I wouldn't ask one without the other. I'm suggesting that we, well, try to live as a family again. How does it strike you? You did ask us once before. Yeah, I know. When Janet, uh... Look, Peter, uh, I don't want to talk about the past. Uh, I'm trying to build some kind of future. I mean, you're growing up fast. Yeah. You'll be a young man before. Well, we've not had a bad time the last couple of weeks, have we? No, it's been smashing, in spite of the... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Look, I, uh, I don't expect you to make any sort of decision now. I mean, you couldn't come until next school term anyway. I just want you to think about it, OK? OK. Checkmate. What? Checkmate. You're getting better at this than I am. Am I? Betty, love, that one's no competition to you. As I said to Len, only a fool would be taking in with all that window dressing. Mm. Well, Len taking in. Well, he's a fella, isn't he? Mm. Betty looks aren't everything. I mean, a barmaid has got to be liked by her customers. She's got to have this warm personality. Seems to me she didn't need a personality. Oh, all right, so she can con them for a bit. For how long does it last, and does her type ever settle? No chance. Mm. That sort of thinks there's always something better on the other side of the hill. Mm. You listen to your Auntie Rini. Dawn Doodah is not here permanently. She's a seven-day wonder. Mm. Then I did exhibitions, you know, uh, demonstrating gadgets, that sort of thing. I should have thought you'd have made a bomb demonstrating. Oh, we can if you don't mind murderous hours. Myself, I prefer this job any day. At least you don't have to flog beer. It sells itself, doesn't it? So you think you like working here? Well, working in a pub might not pay as well as demonstrating does. But I enjoy it. And I think there's a lot to be said for job satisfaction, don't you? Oh, indeed I do. That is why I've dedicated myself to the licensed trade. To me, it's not uh, just a way of earning a living. It's a service in every sense of the word. Mm, and it's friendly too. You get to know your customers. Mrs Walker doesn't like us to be too friendly, do you, Mrs Walker? I certainly expect my customers to have respect for myself. I'm a great believer in personal dignity. We all are here. We dig dignity. You know, this may not be the smartest house in the trade, but I like to think that it's an oasis of peace and calm in a troubled world. Come on, come in now, Mrs. Walker. 
anymore because they're finished everywhere else. Not with that, I hope. Pop the candy! Then switch it off. Oh, yes. They are now. What was you saying? I told you, you'll never use a vacuum cleaner on a new carpet. New carpet? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Mind you, you'd had the other such a long time, hadn't you? No, of course you want me to use the brush on it, don't you? And gently. If you know what the word means. Touch her this morning, isn't she? It's that sort of world, Hilda. I didn't used to like salads. Oh, you, you do now, though, don't you? Oh, I don't mind lettuce and cucumbers, OK. But I'm not really too keen on tomatoes. Ah, no, look, there's no beach, a nice homegrown tomato. Hey, that, that'll be enough now. All right. I think it's the tomatoes we get at school dinners that put me off. All mushy and blah. Oh, well, that'll be them tin things, you know. They're all right in soup, but no doubt. But uh, you do like school dinners. Oh, they're not bad. The pudding's the best. I, uh, I'm a bit partial to roly poly myself. You know, syrup sponge and treacle sponge and roly poly. Trouble is that your daddy never likes the fresh apple, so I don't bother for myself. And Clarbert. Well, Has Dad told you he's asked me and Susan to come back down to live? No. No, but I'm not surprised. I mean, he had it on his mind for some time now. Hey, over here, darling, there's a tasty man waiting. Look, I don't want to be awkward or anything, but I was here first. I do have to get back to work. Uh, half of it, please. Don't. Send him to the back of the queue, Dawn, darling. Save the unmarried blokes like me first. Did I say you could call me Dawn? Why not? You can call me Edward Jeddle Timothy Yates, or lover boy for sure. You can serve me if you like that, Chub, seeing as you seem to be stood there doing nothing. Yes, Hilda, what can I get you? A double cyanide? Ooh, can't you do better than that? No. By what bit of witchcraft did you con Queen Annie into that? Very efficient. Oh, yes, I can see that. Well, I never knew she looked like that, did I? You must have done, you reckon, then, did did her? Not necessarily. With head screen on her, no makeup, you wouldn't give her a second look. Oh, well, I've got news for you. We all look like that to start with. But you've got to have the basic ingredients to finish up looking like that. Like the old saying goes, you can't make bricks without straw. Well, I can't see Annie complain anyway. She seems to be keeping the customers happy. Oh, yeah, she's keeping the customers happy, all right. But I don't see her doing much for staff relationships. Oh, they don't look like an he's doing to me, Mrs. Walker. Oh, thank you. I do try to keep as well groomed as possible. But with going away, you see, and Billy has a lot of friends on the island. Mm. One moment, Mrs. Abdon. Billy? Her son and heir. He lives on the island. What, in Jersey? Yes, he's quite attractive. He's got no problems and he's just a few years older than you. Really? And he's not a tax exile and he's only a barman and he likes some young. Younger than you, you mean? You've uh, met your match there, Bet. You must be joking. Oh, and one final thing, Mrs. Ogden. I thought there might be one final thing. Yes. Well, in case I don't see you before I leave, you will take extra special care of the carpet, won't you? I'll look after it as though it were me own. Yes. Take me shoes off and walk in the room on me flipping hands if she wants. Oh, cheer up, Hilda. She's bound to make a fuss of it while it's new. Oh, I mean, you wouldn't mind a new carpet, would you? Look, I've got about as much chance of ever having a new carpet as I have of marrying Charles Anzavar. You know you want to get a little bench put up round here, Albert. I know. Some hollyhocks and some roses. Look, this is a working allotment. This is not a flipping flower garden. Oh, sorry. I heard uh, you had some very good lettuces this year. Oh, you heard right. Oh, well, could I have a couple and a few onions if you've got any to spare? No, oh, they're not so bad at all. This box was than his bite. I'm beginning to wonder. Well, how are you diddling? Pardon? How are you settling in? Oh, fine, thanks. Yeah, yeah I'm sure your dad thinks so. Well, he's asked me to come back down and live here. Has he now? Mm, me and Susan. Only she doesn't know yet. And I? I'm not sure. Still, if your dad wants you to. He's I'm... leaving it to me. He says I'm growing up now and it's up to me to make my own decisions. Yeah. Difficult making decisions, isn't it? And growing up. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, yeah, great. You spoil your billy, you know. Already bought him a shirt and tie. But I saw this in that very nice men's boutique opposite my hairdressers. I couldn't resist it. Blue's always been Billy's colour. Did he sell nice men? In the nice men's... Like I said, you spoil him. I wish I could. When do I see him? Twice a year? Well, is there no chance of him ever coming back? I doubt it. He's happy there, and that's the main thing. He's applied for a job as manager of a small hotel, and he's very hopeful about it. Would be another step up. Well, I can't say I blame him. Jersey's bound to be better than round here. Anywhere has to be. I don't, but we stay here. Well, I don't hear you knocking it, Mrs Walker. I always thought you were our local patriot. I've never denied that there's a great big world outside, but we're not bound by any chains other than habit. You are. You've got this place. Oh, oh, bricks and mortar. Look, I've devoted to my my life to this place, but when all said and done isn't even mine, I'm just a tenant. Theoretically, there is nothing to stop me retiring. Going to live in some nice little seaside town or in the country. <laughs> I've even less to tie me. No home, no family. No. Friends? You always make new ones. No, I could just as easily be serving rum punches on some tropical beach somewhere, as best fitted to that lot out there. But I won't. I'll be here till they carry me out feet first. And I'm not proud of it. There's plenty I've got to get up and go. She has, for instance. Go on. Yeah. And you wish she would get up and go? Oh, Mrs Walker, would I say a thing like that? Yes, I'm stronger, but not in my presence. Bet, dear. I realise she could be an irritant to you. But do try and get on with the dear while I'm away, for my sake. All right, I'll try. Good. That's a load off my mind. OK. Toasted to perfection. Can Susan do them like this? Can she not? She burns them. She puts stuff under the grill and then the next moment, black smoke everywhere because she's either reading a magazine or listening to her tranny or something. Yeah, well, women are like that, aren't they? Heads in the clouds, not practical like us blokes. Uh, Dad, uh, you know what you said about coming here to live? I told you to think about that. It's a big decision. Yeah, I know. I'd like to come. You sure? Yeah, be great. Yeah, well, we'll see. You haven't changed your mind or anything, have you? No, not a lad. I've not changed my mind. Got any more of these? Yeah, I think so. I suppose I should feel guilty, but I don't. Story of my life. Well, yeah. I skived off 20 minutes earlier. Still, the time I put in in that place, Mike Baldwin shouldn't say out. And anyway, if he does hard cheese, as my two Rogers would say. Feeling down? Yeah. We all feel the same at times. You know, life at a standstill, on one note. I do. Yeah, well, you're married. What difference does that make? Oh, come on, Elsie. Even you stopped thinking that marriage was a happy ever after furry story a long time ago. Is, um, everything all right? Everything's fine. That doesn't mean to say that life doesn't get a touch monotonous from time to time. Same old routine. Even marriage. Especially marriage. At least you're free to kick all traces if you feel like it. <laughs> Gum, it's a long time since I've done that. Perhaps you should give it a whirl. Are you encouraging me? Well, we all need to sparkle. Yeah, and someone to come home to. So long as it's not coming home to rouse and fight, that's all coming home means in some families, you know. That was what Mum was like when the kids were little. Mm. Even after I left, uh, after I left Arnold. Mm. You know, just one long battlefield. You never met our Linda and Dennis, did you? No. Len told me about her. Yeah. <laughs> Elf bells. They used to say I was a firecracker. But our Linda. She. Still. Hey, uh, Ken's thinking of having his family back to live with him. Yeah, so Pete says. Still, they're not like mine. They're properly brought up. <laughs> you talk about yours now as if they were strangers. They are. Well, perhaps that's what Ken's afraid of. They grow up so fast, you soon lose them. At least you had yours with you, in spite of the rows. That's something to look back on. Yeah. I haven't got bringing up my kids to remember in my old age. See, Elsie? Swings and roundabouts. Can't win them all. Oh, 
Oh, come on, kid. You're not missing much. Any woman that's got a fella around the house has got a big kid to look after. Oh, you're dead right there. <laughs> Oh, um, a tin of uh, tuna fish, please. Right, I love it. How do you like that? I don't. Tastes too strong for me. They must like it, else he won't be buying it now, would he? Correct. Uh, that's a lot, love. Right. Thanks. Wouldn't you fancy a bit of pink salmon or a nice pilchard? No. Look, if his wife's working and he's getting his own tea, I think we can allow him to choose for himself. How about sardines? Well, I'm only trying to be helpful. I know if I had to leave my stand to his own devices, which is somewhat I do my best to avoid, I'd be only too grateful if somebody stepped in with a bit of advice. Yes, well, all fellas aren't quite as gormless as yours, Stanley. Three pounds seventy-four, right. Robbie. Thank it's you. all right, Betty Turpin. No need to take it out on me just because you're green-eyed jealous. <laughs> what of your stuff? No, her at the Rovers, what's got mad at me as job. No chance of getting your toe back there in the door now, I'm afraid. No, Miss Perks is there to stay. I'm very popular with it. I'll have half a pound of cheddar, and don't give me the end bit. Are you sure you've not forgotten anything? Uh, I don't think so. My baseball boots. Anyway, it doesn't matter even if you have. I can always send it on. Um, listen, will you tell Susan or will I, you know, about... Uh... Uh, no, no, uh, don't say anything. You'll tell her, yeah? Peter? Uh-huh? You don't really want to come back here, do you? Uh, you've got to be honest. Because if you're not, you're just going to be miserable, aren't you? Of course I do. I said I did. Yeah, I know what you said. And I think I know why you said it. You think it's what I want, don't you? Well, I only want what's going to make you happy. Now, forget about me. It's not that I don't want to be with you, Dad. Because I do. It's just that... Well, I've got all my pals at home. And I've got Gran and Granddad and... I know Gran does boss me about a bit, but I bet you would too eventually. And Uncle Albert, definitely. Yeah, very likely. So it's Glasgow, Gran, Grandad, school and your pals, OK? I think Susan would say the same. Yes, I think she would. And I don't blame her. I don't blame either of you. You're not upset then, are you? I mean, you do understand. I wouldn't be much of a father if I didn't, would I? Anyway, there's always afterwards, after you've left. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be stuck up in Scotland all of my life, do I? No, or Weatherfield. So it might be quite a good stepping stone for a year or two before you leap off. Leap off where? Oh, to wherever you're going. It's all a journey. And some of us don't travel very far. Right, come on, we'll walk down together. Where are you going? We are going to Rovers. No, you go. I'm definitely not. I'm going straight home. Better, love. We spent the entire day listening to how wonderful this Dawn Perks woman is. I make it a rule never to believe anything until I've seen it with my own eyes. I'm not all that interested. Come on, Betty, you must be. Oh, you go if you want to. I'm in no rush. I'll wait here till you get back. All right, then. I'll go and have a nosy and come back and report. OK, I know. You're not all that interested. <laughs> what time is Mr Walker going? Any minute now. And then it's gloves off, eh? Look, look, I know you don't like me much, but try not to stick a corkscrew between my shoulder blades when my back's turned, eh? As long as you do your job proper, I can't say you bother me one way or another. No? No. As far as I'm concerned, you're just another employee. A junior employee. That's right. Ten years, you junior. Yeah, Mr Bishop, what can I get you? Half a bitter, isn't it? It's between Ken and the lad, Albert. It's not to, up to anyone to tell either of them what to do. Look, have you spoken to Peter about it? Yes, I have. I said no. I just said he ought to do what his dad wants him to do, that's all. Yes, well, I don't think that's right. It's not fair to uproot those two kids. They've had enough upheavals in their lifetime. Oh, kids are adaptable, Albert. More than we are. What does the lad want to do, do you know? I don't think he rightly knows himself. And I mean, how can he? It's not fair to ask him to choose between his dad and his granny, who's as good as a mum to him. Would you like him here? Of course I would. Just trying not to be selfish. You know, Albert Tatlock, I think you are, for the first time in your life. I thought Uncle Albert had been here to say goodbye. No, I said it before. Hey, <laughs> he gave me 50 pence. He, uh, he thought it would be best that I said goodbye to you on my own. 
Right, well, that's it then. Well, go on, hop in. You'll want five minutes at the station to get some comics and things like that. You sure you can manage? Of course! I got here in the morning, didn't I? And, Dad, don't ask me if I got my ticket. Grand must have asked me at least 500 times before I came. Good deal. Well, bye. I hope you like it soon, Ben. Oh, thanks, Peter. Love to see you, sir. And Grand and Granddad. Can you show you don't mind? No, if you're happy, I'm happy, OK? okay bye. Well, she's certainly not behind the door. Huh? Oh, it looks like that temporary assistant of yours is going to become permanent. Yeah. Well, don't look so pleased. Oh, I like Betty, I like having her there. But the shop won't support two as things stand. Now, Al, are you sure you want to run this here for at least to get the taxi? Look, I've told you, Annie, I don't mind. I shall enjoy the run. I like a bit of plane spotting. <laughs> We will make sure everything goes smoothly once you have. I'll do my best, Mrs. Walker. You just relax and enjoy yourself and give my love to Billy. You did say I was in full charge, didn't you, Mrs. Walker? Well, naturally. Then I give you my sworn guarantee there will be no problems. Bet Lynch runs a very tight ship. Yeah, she she once went out with a sailor. Did it's so right. See you later. I feel sure that Bet will help you to settle it. Bye bye, Mrs. Walker. Have a nice time. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Walker. Have a nice time. See you when you get back. See you. She is going to Jersey. I mean, uh, they're not off for a mucky weekend somewhere, Addy. No. <laughs> I'll do that. You do the ashtray. Oh, yeah. Do what with ashtrays? Empty them. That's cleaner's job. She's not here, is she, Chuck? This is a very small establishment. We have no demarcation lines here. We all muck in. I was employed by Mrs Walker as a barmaid, not a skivvy. Mrs Walker can settle that when she gets back. Meanwhile, she's only just gone and she's left me in full charge and the flipping ashtray is once empty in. Dawn, dear. <laughs> Tomorrow night, Clive Janes meets the man who founded the Playboy empire, Hugh Hefner. Don't miss Clive at play tomorrow at 9. And next night, stay with Granada Plus for The Comedians. Next. <laughs>